Hi guys and ladies, welcome to another video. Today I have a very special video because you're getting two for one. Uh, it's going to be a perfumers portfolio video on one of the most influential perfumers of the last 20 or 30 years, uh, Michel Almarac, who I've been kind of waiting on, you know, doing the video for him um, for whatever reason. I mean, uh, there's a lot of fragrances here to talk about. But um, I'm trying to hit kind of the high-level perfumers first, you know. So we did Pierre Bourdon, we did Jean-Claude Elena, we did Nathalie Lorson, stuff like that. And he is in that top-tier category to me. Um, some of these fragrances are absolutely amazing. There is one controversial fragrance we'll talk about uh, at the mid at once we get there. Uh, but the reason that I say this is a special video, I know I say that every time, but I actually mean it this time. Uh, is that you're getting a surprise unboxing um, from one of my subscribers, Pyro. You know who you are. Thank you, mate. Uh, it was very kind of you, and I'm pretty sure this is from you. I hope this is from you, because I just said it's from you, and I haven't even opened it yet. could be from anyone. Um, but I'm guessing it's from Pyro, because Pyro scored some amazing juice uh, in an estate sale. Uh, and here we go. So, this is the box, uh, and let's see what's inside. Let's see what little gifts are inside. Uh, oh wow, I can smell it from here. So, basically what Pyro scored, oh, I've got an, uh, imaginary authors to do a first impression on one day. Telegram, I'm not very familiar with this brand, I only have a couple of their fragrances. Um, uh, so I'll, I'll do first impressions. Any samples you send, I'll, I'll do first impressions on. So what he basically scored is he scored a 50s or 60s bottle of Rochas Femme. And there is the sample, and I got two of them. So that is very kind of them, and the smell is just wafting out of this package. Uh, it smells absolutely amazing. Rochas Femme, uh, if, if you guys don't know, was originally created by one of the greatest perfumers of all time, Edmund Rudnitska. And um, Edmund Rudnitska created it um, right before the end of World War II. And um, it was then not lost to history, but I think Rochas didn't really take as good care of it as the decades went on. Not as good care as some of the classics, like for example, Guerlain took fantastic care of Mitsuko, for example. Um, but Rochas kind of let things slip, and then I believe that uh, Olivier Cresp came in at the end of the 1980s and reformulated it and brought Rochas Femme into the modern age. And thank God he did, because it is an absolutely amazing creation. And what a treat to be able to um, get my nose on something like this that's ancient. Uh, and this really highlights... I've said this before, you're, you guys are probably going to get sick of hearing me say this, but I'll probably continue to say it as long as it holds true for me. I keep running across the most amazing people in this community. You know, the um, the fragrance community is, you know, made up of uh, people that, you know, I, I don't associate... Uh, not, not to, not to put this in the wrong frame of mind, but I don't associate the type of people I'm running into as modern people. I associate them with people that I would expect to have lived, you know, years ago when you knew your neighbor and when you, um, you know, were friendly towards your fellow man. And I mean, that kind of thing that seems like a long lost age, which is one of the reasons why I love vintage fragrances. Actually, uh, there is no better time machine than a fragrance to take you back to a point in time, a place, a memory, uh, a idea. Um, and so, you know, that's, that's kind of part of it. The people that I've run across are, you know, just as important as the juice. I mean, they are, um, I've, I've come across some really top notch, high quality, um, you know, some, some very honorable folks. And it's it's rare nowadays. It's very rare. And, and I've come across them over and over and over again. 
Uh, and I know my channel is still small. We just passed the 800 subscriber mark. Thank you very much. Um, but, you know, it's it's worth mentioning. It is, um, you know, the, the people that you run across, most of the people that I've come across are absolutely amazing. I mean, he took his own time and money uh, to um, fill these up, put them in the post, send them to me, pay for shipping. I mean, you know, that's that's amazing. So, Pyro, thank you, my friend. I really do appreciate it. Um, and you will get a first impression soon and probably a comparison video between the modern Rochas Femme that I have. Well, I don't even have the mod modern. I've got the Parfum de Toilette, which I think came out in the late 80s, early 90s, but still decades after the juice that, uh, that you sent me. So again, thank you. It is much appreciated and videos will pop up. Um, before we get to Michelle Almarac, we're going to do scent of the day. And I just realized I forgot the bottle. Give me one second. Oh, okay. So if you watched my, um, this year in perfume from 1994, which was the video that I posted yesterday, you will recognize this. This is, somebody corrected me today, Sorelli. Uh, Fontana in the comments. Some some people are a little bit harsh about language, though. I'll tell you that. Uh, I'm just a Texas bumpkin, guys. Take it easy on me. Sorelli Fontana. And uh, Sorelli Fontana created this fragrance in 1994. It's long discontinued. It comes in this beautiful packaging that looks like a book. And I actually read the um, Rudyard Kipling poem yesterday. If you go watch that video, you'll, you'll hear the poem. It's actually a beautiful poem. Um, and so apparently this house, I didn't know this, but they were, they were created in 1936. I don't know if there's still a house, but it says that, um, through almost 60 years, which is now probably like 80 years or so, 90 years of, um, uh, fervent activity, they have been molt molding and strengthening the magical reputation of the Made in Italy label, dressing some of the world's most famous women from Linda Christian to Princess Grace of Monaco, from Audrey Hepburn to Margaret Truman, besides Ava Gardner, Liz Taylor, Jacqueline Kennedy, the Princess of the House of Savoy, Princess Melba Rufo of Calabria, and many others, on and on and on. So um, they're a designer house. I don't know if they're still in business. All I know is that I have this because of my friend Anuj from Enchante, who continues to um, surprise me. Um, it has been, again, the people. I mean, the people. Uh, it has been an absolute joy working with him. And yes, I am spending a lot of money, but he included this in one of my hauls that, you know, one of my 10, 12 bottle hauls that I spent a lot of money on, he included this for free. I've never even heard of this before. Um, but that's the advantage of, you know, placing big orders from, uh, you know, a shop like that. Sometimes you get a little freebie here and there. Sometimes it's just a little 10 ml mini or soap. But this time I got this. And apparently there's not much demand for this. Um, but I will tell you that I looked on uh, Parfumo the other day. And what kind of shocked me is the fact that now there is a note tree for this fragrance, which there did not used to be. There was no note tree for this fragrance. It was just blank. There was a line item that you could click, but it was completely blank. And I've worn this to bed, but I've never given this a full wear. And I'm wearing it today. And let me tell you something. Um, I have absolutely loved wearing this fragrance so far. Um, some people said that it reminded them of almost like a um, Boucheron Jaipur, which is an Anique Minardo creation um, from the late 90s. This is the early 90s, 1994, mid-90s, but still years before Jaipur. Um, there is an addition of some green notes here that you don't get as much in Jaipur from memory. I don't think there's Myrtle and Basil and stuff like that in Jaipur. So it does add this fresh Italian vibe to the DNA, but you get this Tonka benzoin vanilla thing in the base that I'm really enjoying. If you told me this was an Anique Minardo creation, 
Uh, I would believe you. I would think she went in a little fresher direction, but I, I could totally see it because it has that resinous base that Anique Minardo does so well. And um, it reminds me a little bit of Potion by D Squared mixed with Jaipur. If you took those two fragrances and mixed them together, because Potion has that galbanum angelica thing going on at the top, if I remember. Um, Wow, I am I am really enjoying this. Um, great fragrance, something to keep an eye on, and and this is the thing about vintage fragrances that continues to surprise me, is you know this fragrance is just a random vintage fragrance that I had didn't even have on my radar, and then you get it in and you smell it and you go wow it's it's really good. I mean it's not something to go spend hundreds of dollars on good, but if you find a bottle for a good price, um, it's definitely something to, to keep in mind. Um, definitely something to keep in mind. So, uh, let's do, let's do, um, the list. Let's talk about Michel Almarac, who is very worthy of being talked about. You know, some of the creations on this list are absolutely amazing. And, um, and so, so what we're going to do is we are going to talk about Michel Almarac's creations. But first, I'm going to read you a blurb from Parfumo. I love that they do this. Um, it says, interesting facts about Michel Almarac. There's no better way for a perfumer to start his life than to be born in Grasse. Michel Almarac was born in the world capital of fragrances in 1953. After graduating from school, he attended the legendary Roar Boutron DuPont Academy. Please don't butcher me on the, on the pronunciation. Again, I'm Texan. I get a pass. Which later became the elite school for the Givaudan Group. His most notable professional stations led him to the Japanese Takasago International Corporation, one of the leading companies in the Asian fragrance sector, which, by the way, is also where Pierre Bourdon worked at for a bit in the 80s. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, this was followed by professional engagements at Creations Aromatiques, which created great perfumes for Burberry, Escada, among many others. <coughs> Michel Almarac then moved to Drum Fragrances, which has been part of the Givaudan empire since 2019. In the late 90s, he was recruited by Robert Tett in Grasse, which led him back to his hometown. Some of his most successful and famous creations to date are Casimir for Chopard, never smelled it, um, Parco uh, pa Palladiano uh, 7 for Bottega Veneta, never smelled it, Chloe, and Gucci Rush. Gucci Rush, I'm actually not the biggest fan of, um, but I have other Michel Almarac creations we'll talk about. For Michel Almarac, fragrances are not only a professional, uh, a profession, but are his life. Since 2016, the perfume business has also been a family affair in the Almarac house. Together with his two sons, Benjamin and Romain, he founded the label Parlez-moi de Parfum, which I've never smelled anything from. The flagship store in Paris is intended to be a mixture of laboratory, show perfumery, for those interested, and of course, an insider tip for the ultimate shopping experience in the realm of beautiful fragrances. The perfumes that Michel Almarac creates there are free from of any specifications from demanding clients. They correspond solely to his ideas of the perfect fragrance without having to serve a marketing strategy in the back of his mind. This freedom, according to the master himself, is priceless and a luxury he enjoys. But sustainability is also one of the precepts according to which Parlemois de Parfum works. There don't seem to be many challenges left for a true legionnaire like Michel Almarac. He still sees them in production of contemporary men's fragrances. These would always offer less scope than classic perfumes for ladies. His major coup, however, suggests that he still manages this difficult exercise easily. The Eau de Parfum for Brioni, launched in 2021, was effortlessly successful. Now, I've never smelled Brioni, and I've never smelled Brioni um, Eau de Parfum Intense or any of that. Um, what you're going to find is some older fragrances from Michel. Uh, and by the way, uh, thank you Perfumo for those little blurbs. I absolutely love them. It gives you a great insight into the man. They only do them on the larger, you know, perfumes. Um, so the first one is going to be Zeno by Davidoff. I've got three bottles of this stuff. 
I absolutely love Zeno. Um, this is a um, this is a Lancaster Group distributor, which is what you want to look for. Some of the bottles have stickers. Some of them are engraved, but either way, it doesn't matter. Engraved or sticker. If it says Lancaster Group, that's what you want. And um, this fragrance uh, is 1986. And I feel like there is some DNA that has then been passed down from this uh, to one of my favorite fragrances of all time, Guerlain's Heritage. The patchouli in this and the, um, the mixture of the other notes. This has a deeper, darker rose, I think, than Heritage, but the lavender, the clary sage will remind you of Heritage. Some people say Beau de Jour. I always got a little more of a Heritage, uh, you know, reminder to this. Um, but for me, this is hands down, without a question, Davidoff's best fragrance of all time. It's named after the founder. My Zeno is um, rubbed off. But um, if you can find a bottle of this Lancaster juice, which is officially discontinued now, unfortunately, sadly, there's a lot of bottles floating around, but don't make the mistake many people made with... Um, Midnight in Paris, which was around at discounters forever, even though it was officially discontinued by Van Cleef and Arpels. Bottles were 20 or 30 bucks. Now bottles are two, three, 350. Um, so if you're interested in this, grab it while you can, because once supply runs out, that's it, it's discontinued. And this is one that I would uh, harp on trying to get because it is an absolutely, one of my favorite um, scents to wear any weather, Anytime, I just feel like um, this this DNA is that comfort DNA that I talk about in my other videos. YSL's Jazz, Guerlain's Heritage, Ascada Porom, that DNA right there is in this. It's so, it's so perfect for me, for whatever reason. Uh, I was one years old when this came out, uh, um, so I obviously wasn't wearing this in 1986, but I can tell you that just the DNA fits me to a T. Uh, I, I love it. I love patchouli. Uh, and I feel like this is um, surprisingly modern for something, you know, 35 years old. Um, so Zeno Davidoff is the first Michel Almarac creation. He's listed as the sole perfumer of, of Zeno. Now, we're going to go to two that have an asterisk by it. Number one is Fahrenheit. Now, I should mention that I'm only mentioning Fahrenheit because Fahrenheit is listed at, on Fragrantica and it's listed as having two perfumers. Number one is Jean-Louis Suizac, who is also one of the perfumers listed on one of the other sites, Parfumo. And the second one is um, Michel Almarac on Fragrantica, but... If you go to Parfumo, who I tend to trust a little bit more than Fragrantica, for whatever reason, um, Jean-Louis Suizac is still listed as one of the perfumers, but Michel Almarac is not listed as the perfumer. Maurice Roger is listed as the perfumer. My guess is that's closer to the truth, but the fact that Fragrantica still has Michel Almarac listed as a perfumer on one of the most um, important, influential designer fragrances of all time, uh, I had to mention it. I had to put it in the list. Um, if you don't know this fragrance, this is basically one of the best uh, violet leaf accords of all time, one of the best bottles of all time, too. Marketing campaign, you know, you, you name it. Everything was perfect with this. Um, the, the time that it came out, you know, it, in the 80s, you could have those big masculine uh, fragrances, and this had this lovely mixture of um, lavender and violet leaf, uh, and then the base had this beautiful execution of leather, and so it was so masculine because you got that big uh, gasoline smell in the opening from the violet leaf. Um, there's nutmeg, there's chamomile, there's hawthorn, uh, there's old school carnation in here. 
There is patchouli, tonka, vetiver, musk. I mean, it is just an amazing composition. You can't go wrong with Fahrenheit to me. I mean, um, I could wear this anytime, day or night. I mean, it's it's to me, it's it's um, it's timeless. You're 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 wearing something that is probably gonna knock the socks off of uh, ninety eight percent of modern niche fragrances. And um, if you can find an older bottle that has a cap that looks like this, that's kind of what you want. Anything with this cap is good. This is actually a 1996 bottle. I got a mini from Anuj, a 10 ml mini, that's an 89 bottle. And I think he still has some more of those 10 mls for like 40 bucks or something Canadian. But um, I will do a comparison video between the 89 the 96, and I have a 200 ml of the 2014 version. Once um, um, Francois Demachy kind of reformulated and almost fixed Fahrenheit, because in the middle 2000s, it kind of lost that gasoline smell in the opening, and he tended to put it back. That is a good reformulation. That's what Demachy was good at, in my opinion. And so I will do a triple comparison video one day, the 89, the 96, and the 2014 bottle. But I, um, you know, I, I can't say for sure if Michel Almerac was one of the perfumers, but since he's on Fragrantica, I had to include it. Okay, number two um, is going to be a fragrance that is also a bit of a um, controversy, let's say. This is Yop Alm, the original with the crazy looking tree there at the top. And this is the Lancaster version. That's the one that you want, Lancaster. If you're going to get this, I would just skip the new juice. Um, it's too sweet. This one is less sweet. It's deeper. And you get more of what the fragrance was originally meant to be, which was orange blossom uh, and cinnamon and sandalwood. This is very similar to a very expensive Creed. Creed in 2005, I think, put out a fragrance called Original Santal. This came out in 89, and Original Santal has this exact same DNA almost. Um, and I get just as much joy wearing this, if not more, honestly, than Original Santal. Uh, Parfumo and Fragrantica both show uh, Michelle Almarac is the perfumer, but the um, asterisk next to this, if you will, is that there is an interview that Pierre Bourdon did, and remember he was at uh, Takasago as well in uh, in Japan for the time that this came out, and he claims that he was a creator of this as well, or if not the creator, he said he created Yopom. So. There, maybe they worked on it together, and maybe only Michelle Almarac is getting credit, but that Pierre Bourdon bit, I, I felt like I had to throw, throw it in there. Um, the original one now, or not the original one, but the formula itself now is being marketed by Coty, and so that's probably the one you want to avoid. Try to find a Lancaster bottle if you can. You'll, you'll notice the difference in the juice color. The juice color here almost looks pale pink. The new one, it looks bright pink, almost like sickly bright, you know, food coloring pink. And this is so much deeper. I've smelled the new one, um, and I, I I wasn't the biggest fan. It was too sweet for me. Even though this fragrance is sweet, uh, on cold days, it has that depth and that orange blossom and heliotrope, jasmine, lily of the valley. It does have a floral heart, but the cinnamon and the patchouli and sandalwood kind of save it from becoming sickly sweet to me. This one just smelled deeper, richer, better quality ingredients. All the stuff I harp on about vintage, you know, all the time. But uh, Yop Om is the third Michel Almarac on the list. The fourth uh, is a Palomo Picasso fragrance, and this is also one I would urge you to go for the vintage. This is a Cosmere version of Minotaur for Men. Now, um, Minotaur for Men, is a um, spicy, fruity scent that uh, also uses a floral heart. It came out a couple years after Yop Om, 
and um, it's currently being marketed by L'Oreal. I would urge you to avoid the L'Oreal bottles. Try to find a Cosmere bottle if you can. Cosmere did these um, uh, Paloma Picasso fragrances and they did a couple others, most famously um, Polo, Ralph Lauren fragrances. They marketed those. Um, so if you can find a Cosmere bottle of Paloma Picasso, that's the one that you want. This is this aldehydic, um, fruity opening. You get this almost like a, I don't know, almost like a strawberry raspberry thing in the opening, but I can't tell for sure. But then it goes into classic, you know, the, the breakdown is, um, almost very similar to, a fougere in the fence in the sense that you do get this geranium mid you get this tonka or kumarin base uh, but the fruitiness makes it beautiful for summer it's a little bit playful it's not a it's not a mature uh, fragrance if you wanted something more mature I would go for Zeno or even the original Fahrenheit um, but if you want something maybe for warmer weather it's a little bit more playful but still has some depth Palomo Picasso Minotaur for men is, um, look at the bottle too. I mean, I'm, I really miss these bottles. Um, it is, uh, we're lacking in bottle diversity nowadays. Um, okay, next is a cheapie. And I actually do have the Coty version, um, but it's still respectable. Now, uh, this scent came out in 1995, and this is called Sculpture Ohm. So the bottle actually sits like this. Looks like a sculpture, I guess. Um, this is, in a nutshell, an orange blossom fragrance. And you know what's interesting uh, is I mentioned Yop Ohm has that piercing orange blossom. This has it as well, but it's much cleaner. It doesn't have the... Um, you know, heavy cinnamon, that sticky, sickly sweet. This is perfect for ultra hot weather. Actually, the, the hotter the weather, the better it is. Um, and Sculpture Ohm, uh, this is the only one from this brand that I, that I have. Um, and what I like about it is this would be perfect on like a white shirt when it's 100 degrees out, which it is in Texas more than you would think. Uh, and shorts and you're just going to the beach or you're going to, you know, the park or whatever you're going to do that day. You're going to be outside. This is absolutely perfect. It's clean. It's fresh. It's citrusy. It has the florals of orange blossom, geranium, jasmine, lily of the valley, and rose. But there's a little bit of, there's a little bit of thickness underneath. There's amber, benzoin, tonka, cedar, you know, stuff like that underneath. And so, it's not all just citruses. There's, there's a little bit of heft. I don't know about formulations, though. That's the only thing. My bottle says uh, this is a 3.4 ounce, 100 mil, distributed by Coty Prestige LLC. I don't know when this is. This could be 2006. This could be 2020. I have no clue about um, formulations here. I bought this off of Mood to Seer, and he does have a lot of older fragrances, so, so who knows when that's from. Next on the list is going to be one of my favorite Narrowly fragrances. Actually, you'll notice that uh, Michelle Almarac in this time period was big in Narrowly and Orange Blossom. Those two notes kind of go hand in hand. Um, and this is a fragrance from Rochas called Louis. Now, this is long discontinued. This is a collaboration between Michelle Almarac and um, Amandine Clerc Marie. Never heard of her. Don't know any of her work. Um, but this is Narrowly and Lemon with this woody under base underneath. So look at the color of the juice. Um, it gives you this patchouli woody feel underneath. So... Parfumo says cedar wood and sycamore wood. Sycamore wood is a word that you do not see used very often, and it does give off a little bit of a unique vibe, but it's the, it's the beautiful citrus opening that uh, narrowly and lemon, uh, and you get that narrowly lemon with woods underneath, and this is another 
summer. I mean, these basically these last three um, right here are absolute bangers for summer. The first three are probably more for the cooler weather. The last three, beautiful in the summer. And um, this is, you know, this came out in 2003. So we're talking 19 years ago. Um, but you know, you know, what's interesting is um, the quality of the juice seems so high class. And whenever I smell fragrances like this, I'm really reminded of kind of what we've lost in the designer game because it does seem like there's a huge drop off between what they were putting out at your local designer fragrance counter. Um, Rochus is one of those brands that I do feel like you get really high quality. I mean, you get um, you get good bang for your buck with with Rochus. Um, I talked about uh, Rochas Femme and earlier, and now we're on to Rochas Louis. And so if you can find a bottle of this and you're not getting raked over the coals, this is a tester, so I don't have the cap. But if you're looking for a fragrance that, if you're looking for a beautiful interpretation of Narrowly, I would point you to two fragrances that are, that, um, are both designers. This and Dunhill's Icon. Dunhill Icon is a beautiful narrowly interpretation of narrowly, in my opinion. Now we're going to go to a out and out unicorn, um, and it's a 2003 release, same year as Rochas Louis, um, and this is the original Gucci Pour Homme one. Now, actually, not the original. The original Gucci Pour Homme was from the 70s. This is from 2003. But uh, they released this, and then they released Gucci Pour Homme 2, or Dur, if you will. Um, and this, we're going to talk about a cheaper alternative to this at the end of the video. But Gucci Pour Homme 1, um, this is one of the best cedar incense combos with, there's so much going on, is what makes this fragrance um so interesting and so unique. A lot of people like to wear this in the cold weather as well. Incense is a, a cold weather note. And you're going to see another incense fragrance come up very soon. Um, Gucci Pour Homme 1 is basil, bergamot, tarragon, ginger. The ginger is just there to add a little bit of sprightliness. Lavender, papyrus, which you'll hear the note of papyrus later on as well. Petit Gran and lemon. And then the Heart is geranium, jasmine, patchouli, pimento, pink pepper, sandalwood, and cedar. The base is amber, musk, sage, tonka, vanilla, vetiver, frankincense. There's the incense at the very end. Um, and it does have a lot going on. It does feel high quality. This is, um, my bottle is actually distributed by Scannon. Um, I don't know if you can see that. And I absolutely love these bottles again. I mean... Look at that. Look at the bottle. Look at the depth of the glass, the cap, um, just everything about the old bottles back in the day were superior. I feel like we're really getting gypped on bottles. It's all about the juice. I get it. But I mean, I would just love a little bit extra money on these bottles because they are what houses the juice. I mean, it's what you see on your shelf. It's, um, you know, it would be nice to have some, at least take a little bit of pride in your bottles. Uh, the cedar note in this is absolutely perfect. Uh, he really hit a home run with this, and he's recreated it multiple times now. I'll show you one recreation. He also did one for his brand called, um, oh, what, what's it called? Well, it's for the Parlemois de Parfum brand. If you look it up, um, you'll, you'll easily be able to find it. But... Um, there are other interpretations of this, but to my nose, there are some differences. Um, the quality of the ingredients are not as high in the one that I'm going to show you because I have the cheaper version. I don't have the niche version for his own brand. And I also feel like the incense note is better executed here. It's, um, it's, they, they spent a little bit more time on the incense note. You almost get on the one I'm going to show you at the end, it's almost like you get an impression of the fragrance. So you get the, you know, it's almost like if you took a, um, you know, a wet piece of paper and made an imprint on another 
piece of paper or the ink was still wet kind of thing. You get the impression, but you don't get the whole proper, um, all the all the proper lines and all that stuff. There may be pieces missing. That's kind of what I get. So if you can find the original and you're not going to get raked over the coals, uh, do it. it. It's worth grabbing, especially for a fragrance lover. Um, if you can find a partial bottle like I did, that is probably the best way to go about it because full bottles are insane. Okay, now we're going to go to the house of Escada, which does not make masculine fragrances at all anymore, sadly. All of the masculine fragrances are discontinued. This is from uh, Escada, and it's called Magnetism. So you can see my juice level is like right here. Um, I would love a backup bottle of this. Because this is, again, a designer done right. We're talking 2004. We're talking 18 years ago. And it is a little bit sweet. If it's not cold, it's too sweet to wear this fragrance. But the designer feel of amber and leather and tolu balsam. There's a saffron note. Uh, there's pepper, sandalwood, vanilla, and cedar. In the opening, you get this cola-like vibe. So if you like fragrances like M7, the original M7, even though there's no oud here, there is saffron. So you get this almost like a little bit of a mysterious, not, I wanted to say Middle East, but not really Middle Eastern vibe. Uh, but if you like designer fragrances like Midnight in Paris, they don't smell anything the same, but they both have this designer leather underneath. Um, so if you like kind of unique designer fragrances that are not too challenging, but different, you might put Escada Magnetism for Men on your list. Um, you know, it's it's really a shame that uh, the house of Escada stopped making masculine fragrances because they had some absolute bangers. Um, there is Casual Friday right up there somewhere. Escada Porom, my favorite Escada of all time. And then Magnetism for Men. They also did a fragrance called Sentiment for Men, which was very good in the heat, but that's probably my least favorite Escada. Okay, so speaking of an incense note, this is probably one of the most realistic incense notes that you will ever find. Uh, Michel Almarac did this for the house of Giorgio Armani in 2004. This is the first uh, Privé fragrance for the brand as well. It's called Bois d'Encens. Or Bois d'Encens, if you want to be exact, I guess, since I am working on my French. Um, Bois d'Encens is, is easily the most realistic incense note of all time. And incense notes, when you're doing just an out-and-out -out incense fragrance, they have a problem. And the problem is, is that um, the more realistic you make it, the less it lasts. So you can either make it less realistic and beast mode, uh, or you can make it more realistic and it, it doesn't last very long. This goes to the more realistic, um, but doesn't last as long. This is a 2014 bottle, and this came out in 2004. So this is 10 years after the original release. Um, and I'm sure it's been reformulated since 2014 or 2016. I can't remember exactly what year this was, but, um, it was either 14 or 16. Um, and this is basically, uh, three notes, pepper, vetiver, and frankincense. Now, uh, Eugene mentioned once that you get a beautiful labdanum note in the dry down. And if you wait hours and hours after you spray this, you're talking the late dry down, six, eight hours after you spray it, that labdanum note tends to come in. Uh, but I usually don't ever get to that point because I respray this constantly. Every two, three hours, I respray because I love the opening of this fragrance. It just doesn't last. Uh, if it lasted, it would be the best incense fragrance of all time. It's still one of the best out of just pure realism of the incense. Um, this is, you know, the smell of Catholic Church for me when I was a boy. I mean, that's what this is. Uh, Bois d'Encens. Um, one to put on the list if you're an incense lover. 
Okay, so you can tell Michelle Almarac does very good orange blossom narrowly and very good incense notes. And um, the two the two best incense he's ever done, in my opinion, are, are these two. Now, let's go to the last couple fragrances, which we're going to jump to the year 2005. This is the most... This is one of the most calming fragrances in my collection, actually. And Parfumo says the production is discontinued, which is a shame because um, this was a great bang for your buck fragrance. Uh, this is called Mont Blanc Star Walker. Now, it's the only Mont Blanc fragrance in my collection. I did get a 75 ml tester. You can see the notes right there, if you will. Uh, the notes say pink pepper, star anise, sandalwood, cedarwood, amber, and musk. But there's a couple other notes. And one is bamboo. Um, and this almost gives off like this tea-like note to my nose. Even though there's no tea listed, you get this tea accord. So bamboo, uh, I think this is the only fragrance that has the note of bamboo in my collection. But it gives off this very relaxed, calming. This is a fantastic bedtime fragrance. Uh, or if you just want to kind of chill after a long day, spray some on, you know, it puts you in a very, um, very, everything is going to be okay, you know, let all the stress melt away type fragrance. And um, it's a shame it's discontinued because in the summer, I will wear this as my scent of the day sometimes. Um, and this, this was created, this was done by Inter Parfums, and I've said it before, but as far as modern distributors go, Inter Parfums did a great job with their fragrances. Um, so two discontinued fragrances that are still cheapies, I think, at discounters are these two, uh, Zeno and Mont Blanc. The Mont Blanc, I don't think it matters the iteration. The Zeno, go for the Lancaster, but if you can grab those while they're still cheap, do it, because Parfumo says... Are discontinued. I don't know if that's true, but I'm going off of Parfumo. Um, okay, last two. I mentioned a papyrus note in Gucci Porome 1, okay? Now, one of his best papyrus fragrances, if you like the note of papyrus and you want to amp it up, this is the one to go for. This is also discontinued. Um, this is a fragrance called Homage à l'Homme Voyageur by Lalique. And Voyager is a flanker to the original homage, uh, Alom, which is a Christine Nagel creation, I believe. This is Michelle Almarac and Mylene Alron, which I've never heard of her um, before, other than here. And I don't know any of her other work, if she has any. Uh, but this is basically, in a nutshell, this is a couple different things. It's cardamom. Uh, it's vetiver and papyrus, and that vetiver-papyrus combo is a winning combo, in my opinion. Um, there is only one papyrus fragrance I would put above this, and that is um, Cecile Zerokian's Private Label. Uh, she made that for Javoy, and Private Label is my favorite um papyrus fragrance of all time, period. That's also papyrus and vetiver. Here, it's almost like you get a, by the way, Private Label came out a decade ago. This came out in 2014. This came out a couple years after Private Label. Private Label, um, you know, came first, so I give points for originality there. But this is almost like a designer version of Private Label. It's a little bit more wearable. It's not as intense. It's not as, um, you know, if you wear private label to work every day or something, you might put some people off because that fragrance is a beast. Um, this one is also a good performer, but it's it's designer. And, and so it's easier on, I would say it's a little bit easier on the nose of maybe somebody who sits next to you at work that doesn't know fragrances. Um, the patchouli, vetiver, papyrus, cardamom, and then there is a vanilla, amber, and oak moss in the base, but it doesn't go sweet. Don't think sweet vanilla. Don't think, um, you know, don't think of a fragrance like Feb Delicious or something, or uh, I know that's Tonka, but don't think sweet like that. Um, 
So if you can find a bottle without getting, again, raked over the coals, this is a 50 ml that I got for a respectable price, do so because supply is really dwindling now that this is discontinued. Now, the last one, uh, and this is the uh, interpretation of Gucci Pour Homme 1. If you can't find a bottle of this and you would like to smell this DNA, um, this is what you can go for. This is a fragrance called Bentley for Men Absolute. Now, Bentley for Men Absolute came out in uh, 2014, and it is a um, uh, collaboration between Robert Tett uh, and Michelle Almarac. Uh, and this is very close to Gucci Pour Homme 1. Uh, in fact, some people say it's the exact same formula. I don't know if I would agree with that. I would say, again, it gives you an impression. It's close. Um, this is supposedly a limited edition release. Uh, I don't know how long Bentley is going to keep this on the market. One of the, the top right here, if you go to Parfumo, you'll see this is gold right here. I think they released some for the Middle Eastern market, some for the rest of the world, some had gold, some didn't. It's the same fragrance. Um, what is different according to the note breakdown is the frankincense is in the top here. And there's not as much going on. The cedar is listed as Atlas Cedar in the Bentley for Men Absolute. Um, you still get the papyrus. There's also a, a added note of oud here. There's no oud in Gucci Pour Homme 1, at least no note that's listed of oud. So there are differences, but it gives you this very, um, it gives you the impression of Gucci Pour Homme 1. I mean, that's the only way I can really put it. It's close, but it's not one for one. This is the superior fragrance by far. Now, I've never smelled Parlemois de Parfums, interpretation of Gucci Pour Homme 1, which they, they, I can't remember what it's called. Is it Oris Tattoo? Uh, it's not Oris Tattoo. Look, look it up. Look up Parlemois de Parfum Gucci Pour Homme 1 and you'll find it. Um, but, um, that one I hear is the exact formula with the high quality ingredients. So if you just can't find Gucci Pour Homme 1, you can always go for that one. If you want a much cheaper version, much cheaper take, uh, Bentley for Men Absolute will get you there. It'll get you there 90% of the way, 80-90% of the way. Um, but the ingredients feel cheaper. The incense note doesn't feel as well done to me. And um, I don't know about this oud thing. I've got to wear this more. I'll, one day, I will do a comparison between these two fragrances for you guys. A comparison video. So, I hope you've enjoyed my Michelle Almarac um, Perfumers portfolio video and the random unboxing. Thanks again, Pyro. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are. If there are other Michelle Almarac fragrances that you love, I'd love to hear about them because I learn more from you guys than you do from me. That's going to be my tagline. Um, so, I love seeing your faces. I, you know, a like and a, and a subscription is always appreciated. We just passed 800 subscribers, which I'm very thankful for. Um, you know, it is something I'm, I'm finding that I am really enjoying doing these videos. And, and I didn't really think that I would, like I've said this before, but my joy in the past was just wearing fragrances. Now I still love wearing fragrances. I wear it every day, but I'm enjoying sharing some of this built up knowledge with you guys too. And so, you know, a like and a subscription, I think at least helps me maybe compete with, um, some of the big channels that, uh, maybe are not as passionate about fragrances as I am. Or maybe they're doing it for different reasons, monetary reasons, YouTube fame, whatever it is. I don't want to be YouTube famous. I don't care about that. Uh, and I'm not running this channel as a business. I'm running it as a uh, fragrance enthusiast that just wants to share my love of fragrances with you guys. So that's what the like and a subscription would I think help me do, compete with those bigger channels. Uh, because, you know, someone has to keep them honest. And I, I kind of think of myself as the guy that goes against the stream. I love going against the stream. Everyone goes left, I want to go right. Um, when all the fish are swimming one way on a stream, I want to go against the stream. And so, you know, I, I very easily could be a brand's worst nightmare. Some of my Zerzhov first impressions were probably pretty hilarious, but um, uh, honest nonetheless. 
And so, you know, I'm free to say whatever I want, good, bad, or indifferent, because I paid for all these fragrances. They weren't sent to me for free. And so that's that's what the like and the subscription does for me, is I feel like it just helps me compete with those fragrance channels that are being sent uh, bottles. So um, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you again tomorrow with another video. Bye, guys.